Well, welcome. Tonight, it's time to look at the world from a liberal point of view. We're going to start with our local election because I'm still shaking from the idea that uh, the outcome was two votes. But I don't know what to do. I mean, I've heard so many people tell me my vote doesn't matter. I'm not going to go vote. And yet, I mean, I didn't go down to the Portuguese club. I voted by mail because it's just easier. I mean, how much easier could it be than sitting at my kitchen table checking it off? But yet we only had 10%? I thought it was 13. Oh, 13? 13% this hmm. year, right? Voter turnout. Last year was 9 and change, and yeah. this year? I thought it was a little more. I didn't even think it was 13, was it? No, I thought it I could be wrong. I've known to be wrong once or twice, but I thought it was like... But, you know, realistically, the difference between 10 and 13 or 9... It's still piss poor. And that's of the voters. Yeah. Or, you know, registered voters. Registered that's, not, registered that's not 10 percent of our 30,000-ish no. people, residents. No. Registered hmm. voters, yeah. So it's, it's not good. So what do you do to get... Do you want to do introductions, too? Oh, you're right. Hmm. Who are you, Al? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we start and with who are these random who pulled are these off random the street? liberals that just <laughs> rolled into the studio? <sighs> I'm Christine Crane from Milford, Milford Democratic Town Committee member and host of Drinking Liberally. I'm Glenn Wyke, also from Milford. I'm on the Milford Democratic Town Committee and I am acting treasurer. Lauren Wilton, former chair of the Milford Democratic Town Committee, now sitting on the Finance Committee. And Rand Barthel, I live in Mendon, and I'm a member of the Mendon Democratic Town Committee and also of the 350 Massachusetts uh, Climate Action Network. Okay. So does Mendon have the same problem that we have with voter participation? Um, we get, I think we do a little better, but not m much better. I would like to see more people vote. The irony is that the town elections impact us more directly yes. than like state or federal, and yet it's the lowest turnout. Yeah. It's beyond frustrating. So I participated in the recount, and you know because uh, it was it was a two point mm. two two vote two difference. Two vote difference. Yeah. And so obviously the challenger would I mean I would have done the same thing. You know he asked sure. for a recount, and it was fascinating how it was done. So um, each candidate gets to have agents watch the count and then the town clerk's office brought in clerks from all the surrounding towns oh, okay. and they're oh. the ones who actually did the counting okay and you know none of the ballots have names on them so you don't you, there's no way of knowing there's no way of influencing anything right the count came down everything was going really smoothly everything was fine you know you're turning in the packets as you go and all that stuff and I just happened to be standing at the table at the, the very last packet when all of a sudden they pull out two ballots that are stapled together and handwritten on the top. So everybody's like, bells are going off. Everybody's like, what's going on? Well, it turned out it was because those two ballots came in after, uh, like, after the, the ballots had been already transferred from, I think it was from the Portuguese oh. club, to, to the town hall. So the town clerk's office marks them that way. It's standard procedure. Mm -hmm. Like all the other town clerks was like, no, no, this is no big deal. But we were all like, eh, we should probably. So anyway, there was a challenge. There was a discussion. It, you know, it, it, it all turned out fine. And it actually didn't change anything. Okay. Hmm. It was the bottom line. The vote was still exactly the same. And Chris Wilson won by two. Wow. So, I mean, I, you, you know, applause to the clerk's office. Because yeah. talk about accurate. Well, I like the idea that that for the recount, you bring in outside clerks from other towns who don't have any imagined stake in this election right, right. to do the counting, and then if they get the same answer, then you really know it's right. Yeah. Well, I like the idea that you have agents. Mm -hmm. So right. candidate A gets to pick Lauren, candidate B gets to pick Glenn, mm -hmm. and you, they're watching each other. You watch what happens. And the irony, I mean, it was definitely a nonpartisan situation mm -hmm. because I was an agent for Qu Chris Wilson, who is one of your frequent guests on that on the other show, show. On the conservative <laughs> side. Right. 
you know, I mean, he and I don't agree on anything politically, but I just was fascinated by the whole situation. I wanted to make sure uh -huh. the recount was done properly. Yeah, mm -hmm. but there's, there's something about respecting the process. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. The rule of you law. Know, I may having... not like the outcome this, this time, but I want to make sure it's legit. I mean, when the last election, yeah. when Trump started screaming <coughs> that it's going to be rigged, it's going to be fixed, I was home with my darling bride, and I said, that's the best thing he could do. Because if I'm the attorney general of that state, and somebody's accusing me of running a crooked org, I'm going to make sure that, it's squeaky clean. that every single vote is counted, recounted. I thought he, his mouth would make it more secure. Mm -hmm. But then to come back and say it didn't work, you lose yeah. all credibility. Yeah. Well, so Lauren, did you have to go through any kind of uh, training or explanation of the process before you acted as an agent? No, because all I was doing was just watching what mm -hmm. the clerk and the clerk's assistants were doing at you know the table, and you could okay. walk freely through. Mm -hmm. But it was just to make sure um, you know that the count was correct, mm -hmm. and that everybody you know, sees the same thing at the same time. Yeah, yeah. we came close years ago when. John Erickson, seven precincts in is ahead by a dozen votes. Oh man! Precinct eight comes in, <clears throat> and we're all expecting it to be about the same. Be about twenty some votes against him, and he lost by like a dozen votes. Hmm. And that's when I said, anybody who tells me, oh, I didn't bother going down because my vote doesn't matter. Hmm. Now here's the interesting part. There were, and I, I could be a little bit off on the numbers, so don't quote me, but it was somewhere around maybe 72 votes were discarded mm -hmm. in the Milford election. And the reason for that is because they didn't come in on time. So mm -hmm. if you're going to do the mail-in voting, people, drop mm -hmm. it off at the mailbox outside Town Hall. Because if right. you just throw it in the mail and you wait last minute to do it, yeah. there's no mm -hmm. guarantee it's going to get there on time. But I think that's the key, waiting last minute. Because <coughs> i got to admit, Amy sent me my mail-in votes. Mm -hmm. I got them a day later. I mailed them back, you know, two weeks ahead. Mm -hmm. So yep. I wasn't worried that it would get right. to the... But a lot of people just don't read instructions. I mean, it, some and some votes, and not all of them were mail-in. Some of them are, they just, you know, some of them got discounted because there were four challenges. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to make, well, there was one challenger and three incumbents. Some people just circled all of them. Yeah. Oh. Okay, well, you're oh. going to toss that. Uh -huh. <laughs> right? not a vote for no three. more than two. Well, yeah. three yeah, dots. Well, the heck, the law saying that as long as it's an obvious, you can claim that it's obvious who they were voting for. Yeah, you that's the standard. Check it, whatever, What's their intent? That, that's not obvious if you vote for everybody. No, that's like, I want them all. You guys decide. You know, it didn't. No. So. so it wasn't just mail-in votes. Right. But there was a combination of things. Just people didn't follow instructions properly. But there was nothing. There was no hanging chads. There was but nothing Do they crazy. enforce the cutoff date? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So if I went and sent it in the day after the election, no I don't get counted. Correct. That's that's right. You said that happened in Hopedale, right? Because yeah. they all came in late? Hmm. hmm. Yeah, it was kind of embarrassing because we did the show here and we announced the winner because that's the votes we had. And we always say, well, it's unofficial. Mm -hmm. But we never really think it is. Yeah. This time it really was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you kick it up to the national level, and there's already, Carrie Lake is already making noises that she's oh, not going to believe Oh, that's protecting it. themselves. So it's, you know, <clears throat> it, it, Trump's already saying that he's not going to comply. If he, so basically, it's like, if I win, then it's a valid election. If I lose, it's then not. it's a scam. But, it's but a But help me understand something. I'm not going to accept the results. That's like me saying I'm young, thin, and have hair. <laughs> <laughs> I can say it all day, all right. night. Because the results are the results. Because I look in the mirror, there's a fat old ball man still looking back. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's simple. So I, I don't understand this. I won't accept the... Well, I really don't care. What's the point of having an election then if that's no, okay? That's, exactly. And that's, the, that's what this is really about. It's about... It's about destroying confidence yeah. in our institutions. Absolutely. Which is something that... A, aspiring authoritarians always do. Yeah. They, they will always, you know, they will destroy, and, and the next target after that is the judiciary. Mm -hmm. And and mm -hmm. things like, you know, he's already trying to tell us that, oh, well, this jury is all a bunch of Democrats, and blah, 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 blah. And, 
you know. Trump haters. Right. And uh, uh, now I think it's interesting that, that Trump hatred is extremely prevalent in his hometown <laughs> because the people who know him the best hate him the most. Look at the but, pitchforks and the <laughs> you know, but, but you uh, think about it, you mentioned that they're all Democrats. There's what, 12, Dem 12 Republicans in Massachusetts? If you're going to pick, <clears throat> you're going to get mostly Democrats on juries here. Well, if well, you go if you go over to Douglas, um, you can find you can easily well, find can more than twelve. True? It's like forty percent of the state, at the very least. Is like Republican? Yes. Yeah. Forty to forty-five percent. Yeah. My God. Yeah. I went to the state house and I saw this whole. They got a board, mm -hmm. the voting board, and it had all these names, and there were a few people at the end. Well, said, you're talking about the legislature versus re registered right. uh, voters in the in the I state. Mean, yeah, it, it, two different and this things. part of the state is actually pretty conservative. It is. And when you if, think well, about Blackstone some of the Valley Demo is. Yeah. Yeah. when you think but about some of the it. Democrats in the well, legislature, the South Shore too. Some of them are very, very really? moderate yeah. or very conservative, well, even though they're Democrats. Well, and that's it's what true. happens when you have yeah. one party domination: is that people who are, who are, you know, whether it's whichever way it is, the you know, conservatives in this state, some of them will choose to be in the Democratic Party right. because they can have more of a political career and That's right. have more influence that way. Yeah. Uh, but look at and, their voting record and a lot right. of them, are, you know. But yeah. if you were to take all the Democrats and all the Republicans right. in the state and spread them evenly through the state, you know, then Democrats would be winning the elections everywhere. Our congressman which is, uh, was an ex-Republican, uh, Jake Ocean, Ocean Class. class. Um, I yeah. did not and know that. Yeah, it he figures, but he I converted. Did not know that. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it does figure. <laughs> Stop. Uh, and, and so uh, he changed because obviously a Republican wasn't going to win his district, and so he switched to Democrat, and he won, because the left split like five different ways. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we can tell you that he's never once contacted the Democratic Town Committee any of the times when he that comes he's come to, to town. Moped. Yeah, just saying. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> not saying anything, just saying. <laughs> but yeah. But, you know, I always felt that I'm more comfortable in Massachusetts, and I know you'll disagree with me, but to me, I have a hard time sometimes determining a liberal Republican from a conservative Democrat. <laughs> There's an area in the middle that they feel closer, whereas if I go out to the square states, mm -hmm. boy, I can feel red. Yeah. I mean, I can, or I go out to California, I can feel blue. Go to Arizona, you can feel crazy. Gorgeous. Yeah. I would thing. I would say though that that there's a good deal of of that kind of crazy that has gotten into the into the Republican Party in Massachusetts that didn't used to be there. Uh, well, they're it, all influenced by that you know, whole attitude. They think that that's going to make. Well, I'm just brownie. amazed. I'm say crazy. 40%. Fascist. Let's just call yeah. it what it is. It's yeah. Fascist. Yeah. Fascism has come to the United States, and we're embracing it with open arms, like. Really? Yeah. Are we really? Oh, really? Well, you're the one who was saying that you know That's half Trump the is leading, and half yeah. the, you know half the country is supporting him right now, despite being held. If there's a lot of people who don't like Trump, but like Joe Biden's politics even worse. I mean, All I just heard winning. Joe Biden tell me that on the TV that when he came to office, inflation was nine percent, and when they fact checked it, it was one point. Six percent. Well, I they, like that inflation rate. Well, yeah. Do you like the six point seven percent unemployment that we had at the time? I mean, that's 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 where we were. The economy was still like limping along. It was Biden who turned it around. He's not getting credit for the successes he had because he's well, too the media normal. There's is, not enough drama. And and, the and you know, not covering it nope. as it should. No. It's owned by a lot of oligarchs and and rich people that don't want Biden to come in because then they would be held accountable. I mean, yeah, but the, wait a minute, the media isn't a friend of Trump either. They use him to get ratings, but they're not all they're not they're not pro Democrat either. I know. They're not they're pro money. Yeah, they're pro money. And and they and, right. and the fact is that they tend to make more money uh, put more money in their pockets because of tax cuts when Republicans are in office. And that's why they don't report on the fact that every time a Democrat is in office, the economy is better for the average person. Always. Always, 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 always. You and say they, that, but it doesn't feel like it. Oh, Clinton? yeah. But it doesn't feel like well, it to who? Do, yeah, really. Who are you talking based about? Based on I'm, what? I'm paying almost $4 a gallon for gas. 
I that's was got nothing too. to do with the president. That has to do with I mean, corporate greed. That, and OPEC, yeah, and too. Yeah. I mean, you keep so, blaming yeah. the president. Oh, Trump took credit for the ga low gas prices, but nobody was driving because of the pandemic. So the gas, there was no demand. Uh -huh. Did so, you hear about uh, the oil man uh, who was caught uh, uh, price fixing with OPEC? Oh, yeah. Collusion. Um, yeah, the Federal Trade Commission caught him, and he's in big, big trouble. Big trouble. How do you price fix? He with literally the called uh, the various uh, countries involved in OPEC and asked them how much oil he could produce before they started going to war against each other. And that is a major no no. That's called price fixing. You can't do that. And, oh, and that's what OPEC is about. Well, but they're, a, they're, a, they're their own conglomerate. You can't, well, you can't conspire with them to keep prices high. If you're, if you're an American if you're an businessman, American, yes. then... Well, no, as an individual, then, I agree. Then, then, but that whole OPEC organization... Oh, it is a cartel. Sure, oh, is of course. A cartel. It, of it course. is, but they're not Americans, and they're not subject to our laws. Exactly. And so this guy, this guy did that, and, and uh, Wall Street Journal is saying, actually, it's not a big deal. <laughs> So that's who the Wall, owns Street Wall Street Journal. Right, it's it's uh, run by uh, Murdoch. Yeah. So, See, so I, if you had asked me, I would have said it wasn't a big deal because I don't believe one person could do anything. Well, but uh, all the oil producers, I think what you're going to find out is that a lot of them are involved in doing exactly the same thing. Well, no, I believe a hundred percent that OPEC is set up to fix prices. Oh, yeah, but, absolutely. But forget is. about OPEC. Let's talk about Exxon. Let's talk about. Uh, British uh, Petroleum. Let's talk about uh, all these guys. Shell. Uh, Chevron uh, Shell. And Shell and, yeah. I mean, all of them are probably doing the exact same thing. And I think ultimately, you know, once they start doing some discovery, we'll find that out. That the reason why gas prices are high is not because Biden is dumb or has bad policy. It's because these guys conspired to, to raise prices during his presidency to make him look bad and to raise the prices of all other goods because they all have to be shipped. They all have to use energy but do to be really shipped around the globe. Yes, I do. Because oil, oil knows that, that the Democratic Party is not their friend. Well, that no, fact, but I, I don't think they'd screw their company or their stockholders to make Biden look They're bad. not going to, no. no, they're, no they're, 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 they're turning out huge profits. That'll enhance their stockholders. That'll they're, enhance their stockholders. They're getting huge profits. Yeah. So the, they're, they're actually making more money because <clears throat> of that. Yeah. The other element of this is that um, it is becoming more and more expensive to find new reserves yes. of oil. The, uh, yeah. the, the, we are in the process of replacing barrels of cheap oil with barrels of oil that requires far more cost to develop and produce. And so prices of oil will go up in the future. Uh, and, and, and that will happen even no matter who is president next. And the existing, uh, the existing wells are just not producing like they used to. So, our, our, our energy demands are going up, skyrocketing. Mm. And, uh, and uh, the amount of oil that we can produce, even, even on our best day, is not going to be able to cover it soon. So we have to make a decision. Are we going to embrace other alternative fuel sources or are we not? Because the, the not part is when <laughs> the entire uh, civilization is going to crash to, the, to its knees because we just can't produce enough oil. To, uh, to keep it running. Ideally, it would be nice if we could focus on things like public transportation and sure. infrastructure, which, by the way, mm -hmm. I think Massachusetts was reported in the Globe last day or two as being like at the bottom of mm -hmm. our 50 states mm -hmm. in most of things. <coughs> yeah. But you turn around and say, look what's in the paper, that the MBTA needs more funding. They've mismanaged that program for well, years. But, <coughs> wait a minute. What benefit do we get out of funding Boston over and over and over? Well, let's. Well, it'd be one thing if we could make Boston work so that it, the problems would stay fixed. They haven't put money invested in the MBTA yeah. for a long time. They let it rot. And I think, it, my own opinion, based on whatever, <laughs> but but Char you know, Charlie Baker design to let it run down so he can justify privatizing it. And then he broke it up, broke up the union, and got mm -hmm. around the uh, Pacheco law for privatization, because if you had, what, 500,000 or less mm -hmm. in funding, you don't have to follow the Pacheco law, which was, you know, demonstrating that you can provide the same service, uh, the same cost or less. And uh, 
you, you don't have to do that if you have a program that's under the 500,000. But that's uh, counterintuitive. If I want to <coughs> make something private, mm -hmm. I want to make it attractive to investors. Screwing it up isn't going to make me no, want to invest. No, but it's just the public, publicly funded isn't working. That's We've right. Got to privatize. So you justify Let's privatize it. the yeah. schools. It's privatized transportation. And if you break up the whole operation, so you have maintenance here and this yeah, program here. Yeah, but to privatize here, it, somebody's got to put money in. I can say I'm going to sell it. Well, well the, unless somebody's going to buy it, I ain't selling it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, that's okay. the problem I have is screwing it up to me keeps it from having options. Well, then not, you're buying no. this distressed thing. It's yeah. pennies on the dollar, <clears throat> right? And then you make a profit. The way they sold it somewhat is that oh, you can we're, you can break the union and then uh, you mm -hmm. can have much lower labor costs and uh, less quality. It, it'll all be under the blanket of this private corporation. They'll run everything and uh, and whatever. The market will take. I mean, when everybody was screaming that we have to raise. Um, minimum wage in Massachusetts. I laughed. I said, the signs in Dunkin' Donuts back then said, we're now paying $12, $15 to start. Mm -hmm. You can't screw up labor too bad because people then can't afford to work. What do you mean they can't? Oh, wait, well, you lost me. Well, they I think there is a, if, the, if the actual price that employers are having to pay for labor is way higher than the um, than the minimum wage that you're proposing to put in a law, then, then, then the law isn't actually what's controlling labor costs. Right. Uh, but, um, I mean, but, I had but a it, young man who told me he started at Amazon at 20 bucks an hour. That's not minimum wage, but mm -hmm. I don't believe for a moment that Amazon is paying that out of the goodness of their hearts. The only reason they're paying 20 bucks an hour is they can't get people to work for less. Right. Right, but um, you have to look at the states that have instituted the $15 an hour versus the states that have not, you know, that are still running off the federal minimum wage, which is still like, what, $7.25 Seven or something? Seven or eight dollars. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Nobody can yeah. live on that. And that's why, you know, the states that still have that minimum wage uh, have much higher inflation and... Uh, have much uh, worse GDP than the states like ours that have the $15 minimum wage. Let's shift over. Mm. Yeah, this there's is a war going on. This whole situation. Yeah. Yeah. Where? <laughs> there's a couple of them. Pick, pick yeah. a country. One. Pick a region. I mean, what's your view on this whole protest, pro-Palestinian, pro-Hamas, pro-Israel? Well, um, I'll jump in here. I don't mind people protesting. That's our right, that's mm -hmm. our, you know, we're allowed to. What I don't like to see is when they've destroyed things in buildings. Mm -hmm. I feel like they lost their message on what they're trying to say when all you look at is the violence and the destruction. Mm -hmm. That's not healthy. Well, well, that pesky First Amendment doesn't say you can infringe on my rights for your free speech. Right. I'm all for free speech, but yeah. setting things on well, fire. Or, right. right. So, so full disclosure, I, as a senior at Harvard, I participated in the anti-apartheid demonstrations in 1978. Good for you. And, uh, uh, and we didn't do it the way these, th this crowd is doing it. We, we had, uh, I, I was in no way part of the leadership of this. I discovered one night that it was happening and, and, uh, and joined in. Mm -hmm and immediately discovered that there were faculty as well as students in, in the march that was headed towards the yard. Were you committed to that anti-apartheid? Well, well, I certainly was committed to the concept of dismantling apartheid. Somebody handed you a apartheid. torch and said, we're going to burn the buildings down. Well, nobody did that, and I would not have done that. But see, that's where I draw the right. line. So, oh, so and nobody was proposing to do that then. We, what we ended up having was a a university-wide huge forum in which President Bach and other people uh, from the administration uh, fielded questions and, uh, and there was a lively debate. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and it didn't lead to anything immediately, but mm -hmm. over time, you know, that action and other actions like it gradually um, 
revoked the social license of the apartheid regime and isolated it more and more to the point where eventually um, uh, you know, there was a transition to black majority rule in, in South Africa. But you know, the, our, we were demanding that Harvard divest its, uh, its mm -hmm. holdings in companies that that uh, supported support that were doing business in South Africa. Same thing today. And so the point I'm trying to make is that in Gaza, there is a really uh, immediate human humanitarian catastrophe happening because 2,000 pound bombs are being dropped on people. And, and most of the people that are dying and, are women and children. Exactly. And so, so there is a need to focus the, to target protests against the people who most directly able to do something about that. Mm -hmm. That's not the universities, it's the Biden administration. And, and actually, that is having some effect. Uh, Biden seems to have, it's taken him some time, but he's gradually reached his limit with Netanyahu. And it's, it, it's interesting to watch that process. Yeah. Um, is it that he's reached his limit with Netanyahu He's reached his limit with thirty plus thousand people dying. I don't know. I, Both I, of I, those. I, I have a, those things are connected. They're joined at the hip. I, I have a slight <laughs> uh, uh, disagreement there. I don't, I don't yeah. know that Biden has. Um, I think that the bo the, bo the bottoms and the guns will still flow to Netanyahu, and I think that he's made the calculation that he can survive a, an election without uh, doing much about it, honestly. And. Uh, uh, history says he's probably right. He'll get a lot more uh, donations from uh, AI PAC and other uh, institutions that have a lot of money and, and, and will support his campaign. Um, but I think he's offending a lot of his Democratic base who just don't like the concept of genocide or the idea that uh, we're funding this war against uh, women and children. Mm. You know, it's just not. Well, there's also the, I mean, God. I mean, it's, you know, he's the president of the entire United States, and he also is a representative of, of the United States in the world stage. And this, like you were saying earlier, this is, this is going back a long, long time, and I'm not even going to pretend to know as much as I should. And, yeah. and, and, and you know, I'm pushing 60. These are 18-year-old students that are just seeing what looks to them like something really bad is happening, you know, and, and, and they want to make their voices heard. Mm -hmm. Now, on the other hand, there's a lot of you know people who are Jewish who feel a, an in, a, you know an intense. Um, I mean, Jerry Seinfeld was just uh, speaking out on it, and you know why why is he still pro-Israel despite what Netanyahu has been doing? He's like, I'm Jewish. It's that simple. So it's it's a complicated thing. There's an emotional aspect of it. There's a religious aspect of it. There's a you know the historical aspect of it, and you know kids. Yeah, they have the right to protest. They should protest, and I think that if there have been outside agitators at these protests, just like in every other one, and it makes the message look Muddy. bad. Muddy, it muddies yeah, yeah. it all up. And as yeah. for freedom of speech, yeah, you have, you have the right to speak on whatever you want to, so long as you don't have true threat, you're not causing violent acts, and, it, and it's in a, a public forum. Right. In a private university, it's not that you have the right to protest, but it's encouraged. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, thought is supposed to be, you know, Critical the discourse thinking. is supposed to happen. Right. So I applaud the kids that are doing this. I mean, they're not, it's, who wants to live in a tent when they could be, mm -hmm. you know, I'd be, I'd be, you know, doing bong hits or something. I don't know what they're doing, but hey, good for <laughs> them, you know, like, but I mean, it's important to them. But the and destruction of the buildings, that's what I take yeah, issue. That's but where you got to draw a line. Well, so. we did that, you know, uh, the kids did that during Vietnam, too. I mean, it's, this isn't a new thing that happened. And, and then uh, the police came in, Kent and, State. And, you know, oh, the, the, yeah. to, if, if you look at a lot of the violence on, on these campuses, it's largely initiated by the police who come in and start cracking heads. Uh, and that's uh, based on the... Uh, on the will of the uh, of the uh, the heads Local of the universities who, who want the this uh, uh, cleaned up they don't want the PR I'm or a the uh, issues university don't I get to set my own rules you as long do, as they don't supersede the state an, rules or anything uh, I mean well as long as you're not breaking the laws right. right but when I sit there and say you can't take over my building mm -hmm. you can't disrupt my classes 
Isn't well, that I mean, my right? Well, I mean, it, it, maybe, it but is. you could also deal with the students and their demands you rather than just steamrolling. And that has been done us. by some of the universities, yeah. Brown University, yeah. and I think Princeton also uh, said they had a best. much more uh, open and constructive uh, dialogue. dialogue with yeah. the students, and and as a consequence, I think they are now going to be able to have their commencement. Mm -hmm. uh, See and, that that bothered me, and that bothers me too. You know. I'm you, a student you, at USC. I put my four years in. Mm -hmm. I have nothing to do with this. I've been working for four years for this. And this now moment. you're coming Day in and saying I can't walk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, to me, I draw the line. Yeah. So, you so, know, it's like when we had the Nazis come to Milford. They'll come every eight years. It seems like every eight like years. Like cicadas or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what year are we in now? And, you know, it, it bothers me because they come. And I find their fecal matter in my mailbox, whatever oh. that, whatever that Crusader yeah. magazine. Yeah. No, it's, I call it, it fecal matter. Oh, okay. It has not real. You could use it as fecal matter. You could, you could actually use it to, yeah. But you ignore them. They go away. And another, like a cicada, they dig <laughs> down in the dirt and they go away. But the younger kids are not going to tolerate that anymore. We're not going to, and, and, and I'm not even a younger kid, and I'm not tolerating it anymore. I mean, growing up in the 80s, we overlooked a lot of bad behavior, a lot of hate. But, but I think because overall, it, it, was, it was isolated, small pockets. Nowadays, now we're, yeah, yes, and, that's, and it's scarier now because there's a lot of outside support for this now. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. a lot of the Nazi uh, ideology has been mainstreamed in the Republican yeah. Party. Um, which means it's quite dangerous. So to just ignore them and just hope they go away, I don't think is acceptable anymore. No, definitely not. But it's worked. It worked in the past because they weren't growing, but now they're growing. Because of the internet, because of the world stage, because other countries are influencing our elections. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I give these kids, I, I'm not talking about the kids who are being, you know, out of control or violent or destructive or any of that. I'm talking about the kids who are in good faith are protesting something that is important to them. On, on whether they're you know, in support of Israel, even if they're not necessarily in support of what Netanyahu is doing, or whether they're in support of the Palestinian people who are being slaughtered, not to mention the humanitarian aid. I mean, Jose Andres, mm -hmm. you know, got yeah. one of his volunteers got his was, trucks was bomb. killed. I mean, yeah. this, this is, and the kids are watching this on their phones. Yeah, but look what he was doing. He was feeding people who were starving. No, Shocking. Yeah. not that. <laughs> yeah, you know. we can't have that. I mean, and the, can the, you understand being pro-Israel? I, I, of course. Yes. I think within. Can you understand being pro-Palestinian? Sure. Of course. Yes. yes. And 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 somewhere I, there has to where be. Where I draw the line is I can't understand anybody who's pro-Hamas. Right. I'm sorry. I think and I think those, the number the babies. number of those the number of those people are extremely few. They seem to be very but, loud. But, but, but even Hamas, I mean, like that doesn't just MAGA generate from anywhere. That, that came from the fact that, do you know how many people are living there? In, you know, in, well, in, you know, the thing that's bothered me. a small me, area. Yeah, because I've it's been, gone, been like a prison. Territorial. I've gone a, a few times to that area, you know, maybe to Israel, maybe 15 times. Mm -hmm. To that's Saudi, more than a few. maybe 15 <laughs> times, 10 times. I used to go six times a year. And you get an appreciation. Like when I went to the Golan Heights, holy moly, I sat there and said, I know I, from a defense point of view, I'd never give this up because I can shoot spitballs at anybody. Right. And there used to be Syrian artillery I mean, if you up there. Think of, mm -hmm. Well, you think about the Cuban Missile Crisis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was like, okay, we're not going to allow a 15-minute warning. Mm -hmm. But you turn around and say... <clears throat> Why are, my personal opinion, no facts, but why are the Palestinians fighting the way they're fighting? Because they have no hope. They have no hope? Of course. In, you know, if you built an area, if Saudi, Qatar, the Emirates put in enough money into it and built a thriving economy, I don't know what I would do if I couldn't feed my daughters. I, mm -hmm. uh, luckily, you know, Thank God I've never faced it, but I got to believe that if they had good, solid lives and were fed well and everything worked out, they'd be less likely to strap a suicide vest on themselves. 
But there's, there's Israel's. also within Israel those two fractions, the Zionists mm -hmm. and then the people that are for a two-state solution. Right. And that's a conflict within that conflict. That, yeah. And that's what happened with Isaac Rabin years ago, and his own man killed him when he and, what is it, Yasser Arafat? Right. They were, 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 were going to sign a peace treaty. They were, going to, they were going to settle it. They were going to... And, and Isaac Rabin's own person killed him because he was that extreme in terms of Zionists saying, no, we don't want a two-state, this is our country, you know, and, and that's where part of the, a big part of the conflict is. It's mm. been back and forth like that. Yeah. We should mention that Netanyahu uh, has been funding Hamas to make them the face of the Palestinians. Uh, Wait a minute, say that again. Netanyahu yeah. and, and the far right in Israel spent a lot of years funding Hamas because they, they wanted them to be the face of the Palestinians, not the Palestinian Authority, which is more moderate, also very corrupt, but more moderate and more, uh, you know, more uh, liberal, I guess you would say. More workable. And wasn't he warned? Well, of the he, he did too? it kind of indirectly. He kind of allowed this to happen in various ways. Yeah. Well, they, 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 they were literally funding them. And uh, he's not a good guy. No. He's making everything worse. The, um, you know, what happened with, with the kidnapping and all, all the terrible things that happened to babies and women, the whole thing, terrible. 300 people, give or take? 1,200. 1,200 people, people oh, died. 1,200, I'm sorry. Yeah. And how many people are dead now yeah. as a result of that? 33,000. Yeah. yeah, it's 35 like, that they've you know, counted so far, yeah. There's got to be, it, this is just, this is, this is. Enough, enough, enough. Enough already. Right. Somebody's going to do something. Netanyahu is not the leader for that, for this time. No, but I think the biggest thing is, if they wipe out Hamas, let's just say they do, do you believe it stops? No, they've no, just created more They'll people. They'll build that another are one because <laughs> you're going to put the people back into the area where they don't have good food, they don't have good lives, and they're desperate once again. Where everything's been leveled. And yeah, they're all traumatized. I, I don't, the I don't know where they will just come up from it. I don't know where they're going to live because all, all the hospitals have been bombed and, and destroyed. All the universities have been destroyed. A lot of the housing has been destroyed. About 80% of the people there have nowhere to live. Uh, so I don't know what you're going to do. Yeah, but Glenn, I guess my point is if you brought it back to status quo, okay, we've got rid of Hamas. They're all gone. We're talking magic wand kind of stuff, yeah, here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Starship Enterprise came down and beamed them all to Pluto. And, and make terraformed it, Pluto in the yeah, process. And yeah. you make it all the way it was. Why do you believe that anything's going to be different? People are still going to be starving. They're still going to have no hope. And out of desperation, like I say, I can't say what I would do if my daughters were starving. I, I'd like to believe I'd be a good person and live above it. So you're saying that out of that desperation, there's going to be another anti-group. There's going to be going another to Hamas. Back. There will be another extremist group. I'm no sure. question of about it. And and you know, and and their actions will will uh, further convince the Israeli right that that they need to wipe out the Palestinians and take over yeah. the whole. You know, they need to do their own from the river to the mm -hmm. sea. And so it, you know, the, the extremes feed on each other. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, uh, and it is, it, it's actually very difficult to see w how, uh, how w w w the thing we have to be concerned with as, Amer as Americans is what do we want our government to be doing mm -hmm. in our name about right. this? And it, it's very easy to say that the right solution is a two-state solution where both the Palestinians and, and the Israelis have their own state and uh, live side by side and whatever. But it's just it's hard to see how that's going to happen. To get there. In any way. Like, how do you get there? And, mm -hmm. and it's very, very If you odd. had a two-viable state solution, then I believe it can work, where the Israelis have a good life. Palestinians have a good life. And they can mm -hmm. coexist. That word viable is doing a lot of work in this sentence. Yes. Well, yes. the way it is right now, anybody who, Palestinian people can't go to Israel. They can't travel back and forth. I mean, I'm talking before. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, it's not, I don't see how. The Palestinians can't travel anywhere in the Middle East. I had a fellow working for me in Kuwait. His father moved to Kuwait. He was born in Kuwait. He lived in Kuwait for 30 years. And he had a Palestinian travel document. He couldn't get a Kuwaiti passport. All he had was a card. 
So the minute he left Kuwait, he would have no right to return. He actually immigrated to the United States to live here seven years to get a passport for him and his family. So, uh, so that he could go back to Kuwait? So, so he could go anywhere he wanted, because oh, okay. as an American... Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, as an American, he can go anywhere. Yeah. I mean, you know, you, because I thought it, you couldn't even go, if you had a doctor appointment, you couldn't even go... No, we, again, you don't have... We take a lot for granted as Americans. That we can just yeah. go anywhere we want. That we can want. go anywhere we want, and like, getting a visa for Saudi was no problem for me. You got to Saudi at the airport in Jeddah, and they had signs. Gulf residents, North American, they had a sign that said third class nationals. Oh. I was stunned. Uh, wow. Can, imagine when being I, one of them when and I seeing had to that go sign. Up to Tabuk, <laughs> the northwestern corner of Saudi, I drove up the Mecca Medina Highway. And when you get to a certain point, there's a huge sign that says infidels. <laughs> uh, Literally says infidels right. with a sign. And you, there's a bypass road. Right. Because as a non-Muslim, right. I'm not allowed in Mecca. That's right. Oh they have to keep you outside the blast So, radius. you know, yeah. a lot of the stuff that seems so straightforward for us as Americans, mm -hmm. um, mm, a different you know, world. you said something that you encourage people to protest. Not all countries do. Right. No, exactly. Right. Exactly. Well, well, that's and, a dictatorship. And, and, and that's, that's a what muscle that for. needs to be exercised, otherwise it will atrophy. It does. It does. Yeah. And I think that, like, you know, I've seen this with Biden, bringing it back to him, because, you know, he's old school Democrat, leans more moderate, all of that. But I've seen him make the right decision in the end since he came into office, and in a lot of ways, you know, putting the uh, first black woman on the Supreme Court. I mean, just... Uh, first black uh, vice president, woman vice president. Um, he, he, he's, he's trying to make this country better. I really do. I, and I, make I, I, I mean, great again. <laughs> make, make America not moronic. How's that? Yeah, make it, make Just, it smart I, again. I think he's a good person and I think he's trying to do the right thing. And I am so grateful that he has all those years of you know being in the Senate and, mm -hmm. and foreign all policy experience. experience and all that stuff because this is a very challenging time. This mm -hmm. is this no, this is an understatement. I can't even imagine yeah. the alternative. So, you know, mm -hmm. there's no question Biden has done a lot of good things in his four years so far that he hasn't gotten a lot of credit for, and nobody's really talking about. It. Certainly, the media isn't going to inform anybody about it. They just want to talk about horse race stuff and what, yeah, what has Trump done exactly. in the latest thing. That's the funniest thing because when you look at your cousins on the uh, conservative side, all they complain about is how the media is pure liberal. That's hilarious. There is no media to the extent that we have. First of all, there's no local media. No, no offense to the Daily News, but there is no re legitimate no. local <clears throat> journalism. I gave up a year and a half ago on the Milford Daily News. And it hit me when I saw the section that said local news, and it was Natick. <laughs> mm. And I sat there and I said, I'm sorry, Natick is not local news to me. Yeah. yeah. And, the, and, and then the comment sections are all trolls. And, and, you know, and they've got their so, own agenda. It's all about money. Everything is about people trying to make money on other people's misery. And we don't have legitimate journalism. And it's, that's why people don't get out and vote, because they don't even know what the issues are. They don't know who the people are. And they don't have time to get as involved as, like, we are. Yeah. Something wrong with us. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Credit, credit to you, Al, for trying to get the word out, you know, interview candidates and, and yeah. bring up issues yeah. and all of that. You're but, our local journalist. Yeah. This yeah. is it. And, that's and, a and scary and movie. No pressure. And, and it's... it's <laughs> It's a hugely underserved market to, yeah. to have that kind of information out there. It's sad. It's very sad. Well, that's always been the premise when we do the political season. Mm -hmm. And I've made a commitment. I've said I will never ask any of the six people who watch my show to vote for a candidate. But I'll beg them to be informed mm -hmm. and get out and vote. Because it's more important to me that you pick somebody. Because I believe if enough people pick their candidate, it'll work. What scares me is people are making decisions 
who to vote for and stuff based on the comments they see on Facebook or whatever. And that is not based on sound bites and or, or really get the whole story. Or also based on, well, you know, he's my brother's friend's kid and so I'll just vote for him. Yeah, you know, it's not it, that may totally actually be a better reason out of it. <laughs> In a way though, that <laughs> helps you because I remember we had an election and it was very, very tight for rep house rep. Yeah. Until one of the candidates went negative. Uh huh. And she went very negative. And you turned around and said, but wait a minute, I know John. It was John Fernandes. Mm -hmm. And you could feel the tide turn. Mm -hmm. Because all of a sudden, it's like, well, wait a minute, I know him. He's not that bad. You can get He's away with like talking that. about Trump. You can get away with talking about Bush. You can get away with talking about Biden. Because you don't really know him. But if you grew up in the neighborhood with him, mm -hmm. it, you can't. I mean, you may argue well, with his policies, yeah. but you can't argue that he's a bad man or right. right. Well, and that so that's that's letting you in. That's telling you something about the other candidates' character and mm -hmm. outlook on things that they would be that cynical as to. We've only had as one to, candidate come on the show, and granted, it's only eight hundred shows, so it's not a huge um, selection. That. I had to stop and say, look, this show is not about he sucks, but I suck less, mm -hmm. so vote for me. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's only been two shows yeah. that I've stopped. Mm -hmm. right. One was about candidate and one was about our kids. Mm. You know, because it's local. You yeah, feel it. Well, like at John McCain... When he was running, remember? And he stuck mm -hmm. up for Obama. Yeah, when that, that, was, was, that like, was a class act. Yeah. When, when he said, no, he, he, he's not a bad, he's a good man. He's not, and she, that woman who got yeah. over with the hair. Yeah. I remember but that. Yeah, and no, he's not a Muslim. You don't see that anymore. Yeah. Just defending a person. That's the thing. I mean, Biden has, you can, you can dis, and look, I don't agree with him on, 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 the COVID stuff on on the CDC stuff. I don't know on on not pushing vaccinations more and not funding mm -hmm. them still. All of that. I that's my personal issue mm -hmm. with him. Um, the young kids, you know, are are mad at him about what's going on with with Israel and mm -hmm. and, and all of that. And you're not moving fast enough, you know, because when you're 18, you want everything done quick. Um, Everybody's got their own issues, but he's a decent person, like John McCain. I wouldn't vote for John McCain, right. but if he was running against Trump, I oh, sure would. I would absolutely. Too. I mean, Trump is not just bring it all to the because I want to make sure we get to those trials. Trump is not a decent person. No, he's not a good person. He's not a good husband. He's not a good father. The guy who said, "I, I I'm sorry, I need to be excused from trial, uh, Judge, because I, I've got to go to my son's graduation." He never went to any of his other kids' high school graduations, and he didn't go to that kid's either. He didn't but go yet to Barron's. Half the country, plus or minus the margin of error, support this guy. Well, we'll see. He lost in 2020, contrary to what, you know. But he got 40 some percent of the vote. A loss is a loss. No, Doesn't no. Doesn't matter I'm if it's two votes or. Well, but I know I'm what not you're saying it. What I'm right. saying is. But, that, but even since then, four years since then, all the other stuff that he's been indicted for and all the other news that's come out. I don't know what those polls are coming from. I don't know what questions they're asking. I don't know who they're polling. But it seems to me that there, there's a shift and it's not being reported in terms of Republicans coming out saying they don't want to vote for him. So where is this? Where let's is it that he's actually Let's shift while we've got a few minutes left. Okay. Trump's asking for immunity. He's asking for a dictatorship. He wants be, to be because Putin. he wants to run a lawless regime, and yeah. he wants to be able to get away with it. He's a crime but boss. Now yep. I can see the president needs some immunity. I am the commander in chief, and I got some Looney Tune that went rogue out on the army. You can't hold that to me. But well, uh, decisions you make as part of your job. You, sh you know, we can't have presidents making decisions on policy and then be have them being sued or about or getting sued when they get out of office. Right. But this has never happened before. This is not has not been a problem you until know, now. You don't want to know why? Because prior presidents, with some exceptions, Nixon, mm -hmm. Reagan, we could we could talk about some other people, but. There's the rule of law for a reason. We are a country of laws. And if you follow the laws, you're not going to end up with almost 100 indictments, right? right? So you don't take documents, like classified documents, and store them in your freaking bathroom. 
<laughs> right? Slam dunk case. He but violated the law. But you in your garage? No. <laughs> <laughs> and you definitely don't well, bring, I, like, the, the bleached Mar-a-Lago visitors to come look at them either and well, go, hey, look at this. This is pretty. Well, well, and then and then you <laughs> don't see my and then you don't and then you don't evade a subpoena to get to oh, try right. to get them back and and have your people shift them around so the, the, your own lawyers can't find them yeah. and repeatedly and, lie to the and FBI then, you know, they can don't have them you know and then when you do was the real difference that Biden cooperated and Trump didn't. Well, the difference was one was yes. inadvertent, and it wasn't just Biden, it was Pence. I mean, a lot of times something might get, you know, you're packing mm -hmm. your stuff up and, you know, whatever. Trump had boxes and like, boxes stacked floor to like, ceiling. Like it was dozens of boxes. It was and deliberate he was, action that he did. It wasn't inadvertent. It wasn't, oops. It, no. And and he avoided being held accountable. And then he was trying to use these ridiculous defenses like, well, I'm the president, so therefore I can just, poof, turn it into... Unclassified, unclassified them. Right. Yeah, I just have to think about it. And, they're, they're and yeah, it just happened. Uh, unclassified. And behold, it happens. <laughs> it hasn't just happened over and over. Okay, well, you know what else? We get the whole rape thing. You know, he's he was found civilly liable for rape. What was the, what was the judgment? Eight, eighty million dollars. I mean, it was some ridiculous well, amount of money. Well, the first one was five million, and then and, and then, then it was eighty-three million lap, for yeah because and he defamed he, her again because he signed up to pay eighty million dollars because he can't stop running. And then his it mouth. was four hundred million. Well, that's the <laughs> that's the next. I mean, there's the E. Jean Carroll thing, which may wind up she may wind up having her name on Trump Tower, <laughs> and then there's. <laughs> then there's, then there's, um, the uh, the Trump organization uh, being found to be a criminal organization, and uh, and there's and there's the four hundred some odd million tax judgment fraud. against against him for tax fraud, bank fraud, insurance fraud, all kinds of. But that's just how they do it in New York real estate. Well, no, it isn't actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, nice try. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so uh, and 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 so now and so now we're talking about the the uh, the paltry sum of one hundred and thirty thousand dollars for paying off a porn star for having to, to keep her quiet about Their something that that either did or did not happen, depending on which which of them you believe. Um, and the conspiracy to. Uh, to uh, catch and kill the story so that they wouldn't affect the election. To influence the election, Mr. Mr. Pecker, which is illegal. By Mr. Pecker of the, uh, na the, the <laughs> National Enquirer. Enquirer. Which is a rag. Talk about poor journalism. Yeah. It's just, Talk the about whole fake thing news. is so sordid and disgusting. And why do we want to go back to that? Why do we want to go back to this perverse, I mean, he's Have just, you seen Jordan Klepper when he goes to the Trump rallies? They don't care. And interviewing people, well, we need a dictatorship. I want a dictatorship. If Trump it's wants like, a dictatorship, wow. I'm all for it. It's like, wow. what? I mean, and then they say, no, you're the ones that drank the Kool-Aid. No, we're the ones that use critical thinking. We don't just believe something. I like Biden. I'm not going to believe everything he says. No. I'm going to. And <laughs> I have my problems with him, too. We, yeah. we have had to push him hard. To get, to to right get enough climate action yeah. done, and it still isn't enough. Right. And uh, and I expect to con have to continue to push him hard mm -hmm. uh, to to do more of the things that he has done, uh, and less of the things that are not so great, like like um, you know leasing oil um, tracts and stuff like that. Because Democrats and want to try to balance the economics versus the bigger picture, having clean water, having clean air, having infrastructure, ha you know, having things that benefit all. Republicans, I'm sorry, it's all about the bucks. It's all well, about money. It's all money. about, it's all about and control and women, a, per a certain group's money. It's, you know, it's, yeah, let's it's keep not the about wealthy, everybody's wealthy. money. No, no, it's about right. a Just certain about the group's money. The group yes. that, that, so the, they don't the, have to have you know, uh, the IRS breathing you know, down the their necks, so they don't have to pay taxes. Who own everything and, already, yeah. You know, they so the people up here, Tell the people in the middle that the people down here are the reason why their lives are difficult. Right. The people down here are why your gas prices are high. Right. No, no, no. It's the people up here. It's the people with the money that want to retain all the money for themselves. Yeah, Trump just uh, made a deal with uh, or, or, or is trying to make a deal with the oil companies that if they give him a billion dollars of campaign donations, yeah. he'll he'll roll back all of Biden's right. so uh, environmental change. regulations. Yeah. He's going to roll back most of them anyway if he wins. Whether they, whether they well, give them the money or get, not. 
Well, the, I'm sure they are aware of that. The yes. same way Biden, the first thing he did, I remember, is come in and roll back everything Trump did. Well, he, he's the same thing with Obama's policies all got rolled back. He's, he's right. incentivizing him, but you know, um, the oil companies are already busy writing the the uh, uh, the uh, the executive orders and the legislation for them. Oh yeah, uh, because they know that the Trump uh, the Trump administration, if they get, he gets back in office, will be extremely incompetent. So they're, Trump, they're taking care of it for him. Trump even went so far as to say, and Obama did not do enough with the pandemic response team that he put together. There, it wasn't enough. It was too little at the time. Mm -hmm. Trump has said publicly, after, now he was the one who was president during the worst of the pandemic, he's going to demolish it. Yeah. And meanwhile, we got the, the, the uh, bird flu now that's right. gone into cows, it could go to people. It's like... We're in a world economy. People are traveling all around the world. Do you think that, that that's just a once, one in a hundred years right. thing? No, it's not. Because, like, I mean, how many floods have we had recently? How many hurricanes? How many, I mean, it seems like everything is, that used to be like a hundred year mm -hmm. event is like, like more often. Like five years. Yeah. Well, yeah. when we get back together, we have other little topics like immigration. Mm -hmm. uh, do we have to talk about that again? <sighs> well, we do because it's affecting us again. Yeah. You know, I mean, Milford High or Milford school systems mm -hmm. picked up 200 extra kids two years in a row. Mm -hmm. Now, luckily, the state funded us for it, but yeah. it's tough. Well, you, eventually you, you, you question whether you're going to have enough brick, bricks and mortar to house them all, and, and bricks and mortar are a big expense. Well, we took over the Best Western mm -hmm. for 50 families. Yeah. The state bought that, didn't they? Didn't buy it. They, they just they, that's a whole they other leased thing it or something. Yeah. If I'm coming to you saying I'm going to guarantee you full occupancy mm -hmm. and any damage I'll take care of and I'll guarantee your money on time, shouldn't I expect a better price than off the yeah. rack, somebody walking in? And yet it seems like we're paying premium mm -hmm. for less than premium service. But we'll have to do that the next show because we're out of time. <laughs> but I just had to drop that in. Yeah. <laughs> I thought if you could respond, we're, I'm just going to throw no, that out there. Gonna just going to leave that turd right there. Yeah, that's it. Right there. Right there. Right there. The six viewers. Speedy not turd. It'll Lauren, be there when we come back, I'm sure. <laughs> no, Lauren won't forget that I put actually, it there. Oh, no, she won't. Lauren will remember I put oh, it there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> actually, actually inter immigration has an interesting connection in to, um, to the, the, the Arab-Israeli thing that we were talking about. And it, it goes back to the history of immigration into this country and previous attempts to shut it down in the 20s. Uh, we'll have to pick it up because yeah. we're running out of time. Yeah. But, you know, I, it bothers me when people talk about these immigrants. I mean, look mm -hmm. at Milford, the Guatemalans, who are the new Brazilians, who are the new Portuguese, who are the new Italians, who are the new Irish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're going to be mad because they want to be like us and have a good place for their family. How dare they? Oh. Yeah, you know, how dare they want to be like us? Surely you understand that only certain people are allowed to have such things. No. I mean, not, I don't nothing. Stop calling well, me Shirley. Well, we could go on forever. <laughs> we'll pick this up since we left it right there so Lauren wouldn't forget. Yes, I hear you. We are out of time. To our six loyal viewers, thanks for signing in. As always, may God bless. May tomorrow be a better night than tonight. And please get out and vote. <laughs> and please stop the alarm. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> the alarm will continue to ring all. until you vote. <laughs>